Welcome to SVL Free News and Views for Monday, October the 22nd. Uh, it's a crisp day in downtown Statesville in Iredell County. Hope you everybody's doing well. We just had Balloon Fest this weekend. I know we had kind of a little bit of rain on Saturday, but Sunday afternoon was gorgeous. The balloons got up. Got some footage here. I'm going to show you in just a minute about the Balloon Fest. First of all, I want to thank our sponsors, Mitchell College, Randy Marion, Piedmont Healthcare, Blue Harbor Bank, Fast Fields, Key to Escape, The Escape Room, Statesville Family YMCA, and Crossroads Slapping. As I said, the 45th edition of the Balloon Fest is in the books. It was a great time, especially all weekend. A lot of great entertainment, a lot of activities going on there. I have a little bit of a footage here from the uh, the launch on Sunday afternoon. So I hope you had a good time. You went out there, and, and as always, a lot of the proceeds will be able to go back to local charities and nonprofits here in State of Arizona County. Coming up this weekend on. Um, Friday and Saturday night is Haunted Statesville Tours. Hope you will go to downtownstatesvillenc.org and get your tickets now for those tours to learn about some history and lore of some haunted tales here in Statesville and Arundel County. Okay, so we continue uh, today on our, uh, our candidates forum. Today we have Max James who is running for District 1 Iredell County School Board. So, and speaking of uh, running for office, I'm here at the Iredell County Board of Elections and early voting is still going on, so be sure to get out and vote early. Early voting ends on November 3rd, so we're gonna have our uh, interview here with Max James. We'll have more candidates throughout the, throughout our other shows during the, these next two weeks. So, but first of all, let's, let's hear what Max James has to say about running for the Iredell County Thanks, School Board. Thanks, Brian. I'm here today with uh, Max James, who's an incumbent uh, member of the Iredell County Iredell Statesville uh, School Board. Max, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, we'll give you a few minutes for an opening statement and then we'll move into some questions. All right. Well, my name is Max James. Um, I was born and raised in the northern end of this county. Uh, I decided to run for the school board because of uh, I work for the Department of Agriculture and uh, we have a lot of kids in the northern end that are more agriculture oriented and uh, I was already helping with the school with the uh, Ag Department and, some, and several things there. So it was just kind of a natural fit to try to get in there and uh, and the great thing is we've moved ag to uh, all the other high schools so we have it at lake norman and, mm -hmm. and west and even statesville has a new ag program so that was kind of one of the reasons i got on there i really didn't come with an agenda i, um, I have a background that's in education my mother was a retired teacher my wife is a principal and uh, i'm a certified environmental edu educator for the north carolina and so uh, it's one of those that I, I just have a real drive in education um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to hopefully uh, one more term and uh, I, I said when I started I was going to do my best I could for two terms and if I can get uh, blessed enough to get, get in the second term I'm going to do, do what we can do and uh, give somebody else a chance after that. So. All right. Well, thank you. Let's move on to a few questions now. Uh -huh. uh, what's your assessment you know, of the state of Iredell Statesville schools today? And feel free to talk about anything in terms of test scores or, or state grading system, or progress during the last few years, dropout rate, anything that, that you think is important that the, that the voters would know? Well, I think one thing, we have um, increased um, graduation rate. Uh, in, in, uh, I, I, I hesitate to really spout numbers. We use so many numbers in so many different ways. Um, but it, I believe it's uh, we're in the 88 to 90 percent range mm -hmm. that's in there. It's higher than the state average, and uh, so that's really good. I want to compliment our administrators and stuff that are within the Iowa State School System, including the teachers, including the bus drivers, and the people who work in the cafeterias and our maintenance people, because we're at, we're the 17th largest system in in North Carolina, and we are scoring extremely high for the amount of money we spend per child. So we've been very frugal in our money and we're doing very good there, but you know, resources are always what's needed to, to drive these programs and that kind of stuff. But I think the, uh, the Iredell Statesville system is driven by the people that's within it. And we have some extremely strong administrators and teachers and uh, that's what makes the quality stand out. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take credit as far as being part of the team that helps make decisions, but at the end of the day, the, the kids are being contacted by these teachers and these administrators, and they're the ones that are making the difference. And I think we're doing better. I think it's a lot better system than, than the majority around us. So, uh, I'd like to get your thoughts on the administrative team in place now. I know uh, the superintendent has two more years left on his contract, and, and I would say the central office administrators all have the same amount of time. I think that's the way the board that, that, set it up. Absolutely. Uh, what's your assessment of, of the work that uh, Mr. Johnson and his team are doing now? You know, some people love them, some people 
always find ways to, to criticize anything. <laughs> As someone who's worked closely with the administrative team, what, what's your assessment of the work they're doing day in and day out? Well, for, first off, it is, the law won't allow us to extend the contracts of his staff longer than mm -hmm. his. Correct. So, so that's, that's the reason we, they're there. Because I think very highly of, uh, of uh, the, the staff that he has with him. A lot of those are products of our own school system here. Uh, Brady himself is from the Iowa State Schools. Uh, Dr. Taylor, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Al uh, Alvira Lassane, mm -hmm. is, uh, those are all uh, uh, products of our school system here. And I think the, um, it's a tough job. It's really a tough job. This county has got such a diversity from the northern end to the southern end. Uh, and, and the problems that range in both ends are for different reasons and things that are there. Um, <clears throat> where you have <clears throat> high socioeconomics in the south and low in the, in the north, <clears throat> but you've got um, uh, your agriculture-oriented things that are up there that those large landowners are pretty rich too, you know, and so it's a really odd mix of the way we have to do that. Getting back to those administrators though, I think they do an extremely great job of asking for feedback, getting things that are there. I think sometimes people want to make decisions and move forward and this group wants to to make sure that they are talking to the to the groups. And so we do a lot of surveying. We do a lot of things that are there. You can look at our calendar we just put out for next year, the, 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 the amount of surveys, the, um, the climate survey that comes back for our teachers and for others that are there. We survey a lot of that information and we go over that. And this, this administrative group looks at that and how to improve that. Um, and you can like it or not like it, but it's a, I think that the, the problem is part of it is more of a bureaucracy of the way it has to be done mm -hmm. because you do want to cover everything that's there. It's like the students, every student that walks in the door is not an A student. So we have to sit our, fit our curriculum and fit our system for all those students from the A through F student that walks in that door. We don't get a chance to turn anything back. We're public school. And it's important that, that we do set our system for that. And this, these administrators have done a great job of that. Um, I think sometimes it's like uh, uh, HR people, uh, you know, in the system, people don't like sometimes because they don't let us do what we want to do. But what they're doing is they're making us do what the law says we do. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's, we fight that all the time because we have so much restriction from the feds and the state on what we can do as a school system that as opposed to even what they can do in the charter system for example so we it's one of those things where it's continually working those those two to try to sit down and bring the best opportunity for our kids you know, but staying within the law okay mm -hmm. so what do you see as the top uh, two or three issues facing the school board for the next four years i think one of the things we need to make sure we've got uh, open communications and transparency with parents to, to look at our options we, we are looked at across the state um, as one of the school systems that has uh, some of the greatest options for, for students that are there. My opinion is if I do get reelected, I'd like to see this drop back into the uh, middle school and almost elementary level because if we're going to gear the 21st century worker to have these skill set, we've got to start back here. If the kids can learn a foreign language in the first uh, grades one through five, a lot easier. That's what the science says. Why are we waiting until they're, they're uh, uh, in high school to start? So we've got to look back at the science of what's teaching and what's there. We've got to work with our partners that are here. What kind of workers do we need? I don't want people to go to school and graduate, and hopefully go to college, our wonderful school system we have in North Carolina, go to one of our colleges and say, I can't come back to Arlo County because you don't have the jobs that are here. Mm -hmm. What I would rather see is what companies here, what kind of job skills do you need? And let's prepare these students for this so they can come home and they can raise their families here like we did. And so those are a, a couple of things. Probably the third thing is it's always going to be is resource. We're always looking at between some federal cuts, some state cuts, people's ideas of the way theology, how the way things should go, are not always funded the same way. I think it's an ever-moving target. And the uh, education of our children, we've, we're operating on a model that's 175 years old. And so, yeah, I think it's time we could probably change it. And you know? <laughs> it's just about time to do a little something maybe a little different. And so I think we're looking at your I academies and other things that if you want to homeschool, but yet you still need band or you still need expertise in a uh, advanced uh, um, chemistry class, mm -hmm. you can take those. And if we need to do them cyberly or we need, you can come to CATS, to our wonderful facility there and take that, then I think the key to it is what do we need? What do the citizens in this county need? And we need to take as many options that we can afford to them. That's the, the last one is that economics we have to do.
That's, that's it. Okay. For those who might not know you, tell us a little bit about the, your unique experiences and education uh, that have equipped you to help tackle these problems. Well, I think growing up in the county here, I am a product of the school system. I graduated from Harmony Elementary School. I went to, we didn't have middle schools when I was old enough. And, and uh, we went from there to uh, North Idaho. Uh, graduated from there, went to NC State uh, with an animal science degree from there. Ended up coming back to Mitchell College and uh, got a degree here and then went to, uh, to uh, UNC Charlotte and got a, um, a Bachelor's of Arts in, in Marketing Business. And so working for the Department of Agriculture for the last 26 years, I use a lot of skill set from that marketing because I think if we don't sit down and show advantage to both sides, it never works out. You've got to have buy-in, you've got to have that communications, and if you don't build that relationship, you're never gonna have it. I think one of the best teachers that we always had growing up in school, if you remember back, they were the ones that, they may have been hard on you, but they also believed in you, and you knew that, and that's the reason it was there. Coaches know that in ball. If they're really going to get the best out of a player, they're going to build that relationship and they're going to get there. And we're working on teachers now to make sure that that comes back. That if you don't build that relationship, you're never going to get there. So to me, I think that's that's where I'm at. Um, as my wife's always told me, she said, "You have the right to remain silent. You just don't have the ability." And so I I, I would rather start the talk and get us going and let's let's go let's move forward and see what we can do. I don't have to, we don't have to always agree, uh, uh, but we, we always do, do need to communicate. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, one final question. Sure. Uh, do you support the quarter cent uh, sales tax for school safety and security and student well-being? And are you actively, you know, campaigning for or against it? Um, I'm, uh, I'm for it. Um, I, it the, uh, it's one of those things where I think the, uh, the county itself is in control of our budget regardless. Uh, it's not like e even if it passes, the county can choose after a year to not give it to the school board. It's, it's not there's anything written in statute there. That's kind of a gentleman's agreement or whatever you would call those uh, from the past. But I think the uh, the benefit to the county is we're, we're those small amounts of money are what's making a difference in us being able to do these other options. And uh, the county's done well in the last couple of years as far as coming up with a little bit more money. Um, and we're trying to do the best we can do to, to, to keep those options open for parents and that kind of thing. So, yes, I am behind it. I hope the uh, citizens understand that the, one of the most important things is, is these kids, schools got to be safe. They, we've got to do that. We have a wonderful relationship with our sheriff and our other uh, uh, municipalities with their the police officers. We rely on them extremely heavy for that law enforcement. And working with them, we're by statute responsible for the safety as the board, but at the end of the day, we got to work with our partners here and, and make sure that's there. So, um, yes, I, I will have to say on record that um, I probably, I don't have any signs in my yard, but I'd be glad to talk to you know people, when I, and I have told them, because I think it's going to benefit not just the county, but it's going benefit, to benefit the students. And uh, so. Okay. Well, thanks, Mr. James. I appreciate you taking the time today, and good luck on Election Day. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there you have it, a good interview with, um, from Mike Furman and Max James about his uh, thoughts on running for Ardell County School Board. And re remember to come out before November 3rd to the Ardell County uh, Board of Elections here on Stockton Street, and you can vote early up to November 3rd. So if you haven't done it yet, uh, go to svlfreenews.com and sign up for your email edition, which comes out every morning at, at 5 a.m. And also go out and get your tickets for Haunted States. So Bear Valley is getting ready for a great season this fall season, and we'll keep you informed right here at SVL Free News and Views. See you on Wednesday.